Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. You know, I'm a college professor and I told you before that I love teaching. Now, how did that come about? So I want to give you a little bit of history. It did start in first grade. When I was in first grade, this was many years ago, and uh, those things probably do not happen any longer, but I had a teacher that used to beat up the children. And he had uh, uh, two tools. One was uh, a two by four, where you'd have to go with your hands like this, and would just hit them really hard. Uh, if you did something really, really bad, it would ask you to turn them over, so you know, get your bodies, and that would hit you, get you more pain. <laughs> he also had this uh, extremely long, uh, at least I was a child, so he looked to me so, <laughs> very, very long stick, so that he could sit at his uh, desk, and actually, without even getting up, I guess he was lazy too, he <laughs> would just <laughs> <laughs> hit the children from that sitting position. So he was definitely skilled at beating up children. Now, he rarely beat me up by watching other children going through that was very traumatizing for me. So my start with school as a student was not a very happy one. We moved to second and third grade. I had a wonderful teacher. He really encouraged me, loved me, believed in me, and they made a big difference. My father was moving from city to city, so unfortunately I was moving with them, and every grade, or every couple of grade, I had the different teachers and different friends. So I moved to fourth and fifth grade, and I found a very strange teacher. This teacher, even though, okay, I'm not that old, at that time we used to have pens, but he loved quilts, you know, with the ink that you, you know, Harry Potter, okay, fine. <laughs> so, you know what quills are. And uh, I couldn't write with those things. The other children did because they had three years before with them. I joined in the last. So, of course, try to write with a quill when you're not used. My writing looked pretty horrible. And I'll never forget one of the first times there, he took my writing. We have a notebook, a little notebook. And uh, he took a clothespin and he pinned it in the back of my um, shirt and made me walk the shame walk between all the abs. So, I'm so glad that I'm smiling about that. That means some healing occurred. So I put <laughs> my stuff on my back after all that. So then uh, I went to junior high. Three years of health. It was, a, it was a very tough school, and uh, I was just horrible. I just didn't like it, and uh, one after the other. Then I went to high school. I'm trying to make this short, because I don't want to drag you through all that pain. Really. So what happened was high school. My, fundamentally, my teachers told my, when I finally graduated, and I had to repeat one year, they told my parents, uh, buy him a shovel because that's as far as he's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> really encouraging, okay? So, that brings me to my love for teaching. I definitely wanted to do something different. Now, I've, I've not always been a teacher. I was an IT consultant for 15 years. But my call happened about seven years ago, and I embraced teaching, and I love it. Why? Because I do it in a totally different way. Now I'm not dealing with children, I'm teaching with college, I'm dealing with college students, both undergraduate and graduate, but I just like to have a different approach. I always hated the approach of memorize, regurgitate, and forget. So thank goodness I'm teaching in the colleges, they give me, they respect me and they give me a lot of freedom so I can use my own philosophy in teaching. And what's happening is this, that I want to make sure the students learn. I want to make sure that they have a, a transformational experience. You know, I'm also a life coach, so putting together the life coaching with the teaching, that is my goal, to give them really a transformational experience. So, 
I'm teaching classes in leadership. Graduate classes in leadership. So what do I do? I tell them, okay, are we going to study a bunch of theories from someone else that they probably died or whatever it is, or are we going to practice leadership? So what I do is, okay, tell me, what do you want to learn? How do you want to learn it? What's going to help you in developing your leadership skills? And I'm very successful with that. It's something that I apply to all my classes. Practical, right now, let's have a project. What do you want to study? What is the best application that will make you come out of this class and make you feel confident and comfortable that you know and you have experienced the subject matter? Today, I have a mission statement, and that mission statement is something that I put together a while back. My mission statement as a teacher goes something like, like this. I see my student not just as they are, but as the future leaders that they will become. I believe in them when they do not believe in themselves, and even if no one else does. Which if you think about it, is totally the opposite of what I experienced with my teachers, right? So, it has been a journey. It has been uh, something that has developed a little bit at a time. I wasn't always a good teacher. But I think the most important lesson here is sometimes past bad experiences are exactly what we need in order to really change things and make the very best whatever it is that we decide to become because we want to do it in spite of the difficulty, in spite of the pain, in spite of what we experience first. So that has been my inspiration, and I hope that's yours too. Thank you.